Hi, and welcome to this uh, talk on systems, and which we start with the definitions of systems and uh, related concepts. But first off, the question is, what is a system? It's a fairly loose concept. That is, a lot of things are systems. And the, um, the basic definition of a system is something that has a set of interacting and interdependent components. That's about as close as we can come to a, a definition. The implication or the expectation is that a system would actually do something. Uh, it's not just um, an arbitrary collection of things that happen to coincide and, and do something. There, there usually is some sort of a purpose to it. But the important part is that there are multiple components. They do interact. They do produce uh, behaviors as a consequence of this interaction, as well as more direct uh, behaviors. So some of the characteristics or symptoms of systems is that we can't always predict exactly what it's going to do. Now that brings us to the concept of emergence. Emergence is a phenomena, um, usually behavior type phenomena, that arise out of the interaction of components of a system. Now an example uh, just to put it in fairly concrete terms, if you think, in, if you think of uh, the concept of safety in a, a car, a car safety is not a, a specific component of a car. Uh, you can look at some, uh, some things that contribute to the safety of the car, like the airbags, seat belts, the, you know, the side doors, the, um, uh, the passenger cell, the crumple zones. There's a physical uh, components of the car that are intended to uh, assure safety in the event of an accident. But then there are other aspects of the car, such as its handling and its brakes, that um, uh, steering, I guess, that uh, avoid um, accident-prone situations or situations in which an accident is likely to occur. And other aspects, such as the visibility from the car, the absence of distractions, um, the, I guess, the, um, the uh, access to the environment. So, for example, uh, one of the problems of modern cars is they're, they're so well insulated uh, from noise that um, sometimes um, the, the, the warnings of accidents or warnings of situation are just missed because the noises don't get through. Uh, be that as it may, the concept is, is that of emergence, and safety is an emergent property of a large number of things uh, within a vehicle. It's not a property of any one thing or any, any um, collection of things. It's, it's a property of the interaction of them all. Now, similarly, in software development, um, the qualities, particularly the behavioral qualities of the software system, is an emergent property of many things in the software development uh, environment and processes um, and the organization. It's not, the, the, although we, we try to design the, the um, qualities in, that is the, the attributes and characteristics of the software, we try to design them in at the architecture time, we try to program them in and make sure we've got them all there, but there's more to it than that. Because no matter what you design, they won't finish up in the system if there isn't the time or the budget to, uh, to detect and fix errors, uh, if the infrastructure is not there to allow you to uh, test the software um, in, in order to find all the bugs, uh, it won't be there if there are insufficient resources to go and develop the thing thoroughly and to test it and, and uh, check it all out. So again, the qualities of software systems are an emergent property. They're not something that is simply put in there in one particular part. Now, from there, we'll go to systems theory. And this is the body of theory that uh, helps us to um, reason with and reason about systems. Um, it's an interdisciplinary study uh, of systems because systems tend to exist in all manner of things. There are engineering systems, there are biological systems, there are uh, other systems in the, the natural world such as the climate system and uh, uh, the environmental system. Uh, and there's a number of them. And systems theory tries to span uh, as many of these systems as is possible. So it's an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary 
uh, field of study. What we're most interested in is self-regulating systems. The most natural systems do tend to be self-regulating. Now this is not to say stable, because frequently they're not, but they are self-regulating. Uh, for example, in most um, populations of, of animals in the wild, for example, the population is, is relatively stable because um, the number of predators and the number of the, um, the animals that die due to disease or are born, in Greek, are born bad or um, uh, other causes um, are balanced with the available food supply, um, the actions of predators, all these things that, that tend to make up a reasonably stable system uh, of that population of the, the, um, the animal concerned. Now in, um, in our own, um, take our own body for example, uh, we are a living system and we have a reasonably stable uh, temperature, for example, the internal temperature. And it, it is regulated by a large number of contributing parts of the, of the body. So we're interested in studying, among other things, the body because of the, the, uh, the number of things um, in, in the body that regulate its, its functioning. Now another important concept of systems is that you don't have a single system. You generally have systems within systems, multiple levels. Um, we'll, we'll come across this more and more as we go on, but uh, you get a hierarchy of systems from, um, I guess, as arbitrarily as, as, as you'd like to go, and then the entire universe is a system, and you come down from there. But um, I guess um, one image to keep in mind is the um, the image of the Matryoshka dolls, the Russian dolls. Uh, you may have seen them, the, the, the wooden dolls where you open up a doll and there's another doll inside. You open up that one and there's another doll inside and so on down. Generally, if you buy them as uh, souvenirs, you get, uh, say, between somewhere around about between five and about 12 uh, dolls, all encased within each other. And systems tend to be like that. You open up one and there's a system inside. You open up that there's another system inside and on down. However, for, uh, for working purposes in uh, quality management and in software development, we're dealing with largely three levels of hierarchy. That is, in organizations, the strategic level, then the tactical level, and the operational level. If we want to go bigger than that within, uh, within uh, for example, a country, uh, we then go up through the um, uh, financial regulatory system, the judicial system, and the government system. Uh, so there are multiple levels of, of uh, uh, hierarchy in these systems. And in some ways, um, it's fairly arbitrary uh, where, um, which ones you consider systems and, and what type of hierarchy you put together. So we'll cover that a little bit uh, later when we start uh, looking at investigating accidents. But anyway, for the moment, for working purposes, we have three levels of system. That is the um, uh, strategic level in the organization, the tactical level, and the operational level. Now, within, uh, within each, within any one um, system, the way they operate is, is a system will impose constraints and give directives to the level below it. And it will receive back um, feedback, um, product or, or some kind of output, and emergent phenomena. So it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, however, having said it's simple, when you get down to the details of it, uh, the devil's in the details are not entirely that, that, um, that simple. But that's a reasonable, uh, reasonable go at it. In systems, uh, we have this this concept of systems thinking, which is where um, we apply the systems theory and uh, the operations of systems to most problems, instead of trying to take a instead of trying to make it a, a simple causal system, we assume that it's a um, 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 interacting system. So we, we, we assume straight, off the, the, straight away that it's a, a complex, complicated thing. 
Um, and we apply this whole concept of interacting elements and emergent properties. And it seems to give uh, a better way of dealing with things for a large number of things. Now, um, examples are, uh, for example, um, firefighting. Now, fire uh, has three essential elements. You have fuel load, you have temperature, and you have um, oxygen. If you take away the fuel, there's no fire. If you take away the temperature, there's no fire. I mean, it's really hard to get a fire going in Antarctica, for example. If you take away oxygen, there's no fire. So, in this country, we have, um, uh, over the summer period particularly, we have uh, bushfires or wildfires, and uh, these can be quite, uh, quite horrendous. So, uh, some of the ways that you can deal with this is you can try to reduce the fuel load during the cooler months of the year when you're better able to control uh, some fires. So you deliberately light fires just to get rid of the, uh, the dead wood and uh, to replenish the bush. And this works pretty well. Um, if however you get a fire, you can try to, to fight it by uh, taking the temperature away so you, you bomb it with water. And part of that is smothering the fire and part of it is just reducing the temperature. Uh, so that it's less uh, less prone to spread. And the other thing you can do is you can you can um, exclude the oxygen. Now, it's pretty hard to do with a bushfire, but in something smaller than a bushfire, you can do that with um, CO2 sprays or um, covering the fire with a fire blanket. There are are other uh, similar systems you can think of um, where instead of um, directly confronting the visible symptoms, you can have a look at the, the entirety of the system and change the system by uh, reducing or removing the action of one or more elements of it. Now, in systems theory, there are a number of people whose names you come across again and again. Uh, the first one, and major one, is uh, Ludwig von Bertolanti. In many ways, he established the field of system theory by publishing the book uh, general systems theory. There are some arguments that the English translation from the German is not that good and that the, tr the uh, title of general system theory is a little bit misleading. Well, it may be, but you establish the field and almost anything you do in systems you will eventually come across his name. Another major name um, among a few in the uh, 1950s and early 1960s was Stafford Beer. He, along with a few others, considered what are the essential elements of a system in order for it to remain viable, that is, to, um, to live, to survive, to continue to prosper. Um, and he had a look at that. He did come up with a particular model. Uh, Sometimes we may have come across it in our work. Um, but it was a fairly, uh, it's a fairly useful model. The other name you come across in information technology is Peter Checkland. He developed the soft systems methodology. Now this was a methodology that applied to the constructed world of business as opposed to the, the natural world which tends to be full of um, tangible phenomena. Uh, so in contrast, in the business world we're dealing with intangible things and Peter Checkland developed the, uh, a lot of thinking to do with, with the intangible world. So his, his uh, contribution on the soft system methodology. So in summary then, uh, we'll have the definition of the system as um, something that has components that, that are interdependent and interact. The interactions within the system produce emergent phenomena usually. Uh, system thinking and system theory are quite useful for dealing with complex problems. So we tend to try to use them, um, they tend to be quite successful. Social problems or social systems tend to be complex and, um, and in some ways um, they've been called wicked problems. That is, there isn't any solution to them, you can't solve them in any real sense. All you can do is change them from one state to another. But uh, that could be a little bit more than anything else. So there you have it. This is systems thinking and uh, systems theory and the basic definitions and concepts for systems.